that they are never going to be present. We set ourselves likely to be small. We surrender, and our willingness to change increases dramatically. We have already experienced remarkable changes in our emotional and spiritual nature through our continuous efforts in live by the principle contained in the previous steps.
energy we want to put into the current feeding of our carrot or tidbits can now be put into nurturing our spiritual growth. The more attention we focus on our spiritual nature, the more it will unfold in our lives. We will not, however, achieve a state of spiritual perfection. The color of how diligently we apply the six steps to our lives. We will not likely see the difference between this to the manifest themselves in a variety of ways throughout our lifetime. Even after years of recovery, we may be devastated at the reappearance of some old defect which thus had been removed. We are humbled by our imperfection, but let there be no mistake. Humility is the item state for an addict to be in. Humility brings us back down to earth and plants our feet firmly on the spiritual path we are walking. We smile at our delusions of perfection and keep on walking. We are on the right path, headed in the right direction, and each step we take brings progress. We feel more tolerance for the defects of those around us as we work this step. When we see someone acting up on a defect, let me stand rested on ourselves. We feel compassionate rather than judgmental, for we know just exactly how much pain such behavior causes. Rather than condemning the behavior of another, we look at ourselves. Having experience in exactly ourselves, we can extend compassion and tolerance to others. We ask ourselves if we are entirely ready to help and remove all of our defects, every single one. If any reservation exists, if we feel the need to cling to any defect, we trust our willingness. We open our spirits to the feeling we found in Narcotics Anonymous and use the resources of our recovery to our best each moment. Although the process lasts a lifetime, we only live in the present day. We take a light chance step forward in the process of recovery but it must be followed with another to be truly lessly. With the readiness we have at hand today, we go on to step 7. Step 7. Sai Shi. We humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. In step 4, we uncover the basic defects of our character. In step 5, we admit their existence. In step 6, we became entirely ready to help them remote so that we could experience continuing spiritual growth and recovery. Now, in step 7, we humbly ask our higher power to remove our shortcomings. When we ask our higher power to remove these shortcomings, we ask for freedom from anything which limits our recovery. We ask for those because we cannot do it alone. Through working the previous steps, we see that attaining humility is necessary if we are going to live 
Clean eggs, clean blood, and block eggs, spiritual care. And that you can all communicate, it's not possible as humiliation. Or is he take denial of all our qualities? On the contrary, and that you can all communicate, means that we can very really speak to all ourselves and our place in the world. In the seventh step, humility means understanding our needing our own recovery, appreciating our strengths and limitations, and having a innate power quicker than ourselves. To work the seventh step, we must get out of the way so that God can do what work. Humbly asking for the removal of our shortcomings means we are giving complete lessons to the loving part to work in our lives, believing that God's wisdom corrupts our own. Even though we now possess some measure of humility, many of us may be somewhat confused by the word humbly. We may have taken it for granted that God will remove our shortcomings immediately upon your friend. Those of us with this attitude may have been prepared when our higher power didn't comply with our request. On the other hand, some of us translating with that to remove our shortcomings, blessing that will be a demonstration of humility. We tried so hard to take it right. We were tired of our shortcomings. We were worn off from trying to manage and control them, and we wanted some relief. Only enough, this is precisely the attitude we call to demonstrate in step 7, the attitude of humility. We admit the faith, recognize our limitations, and ask for help from the God of our understanding. Asking our higher power to remove our shortcomings requires a surrender of a more pronounced nature than our initial surrender. Let surrender, born of sheer despair over our powerlessness and inability to manage our lives, move into an entirely new realm in the seventh step. Surrender. We accept not only our addiction but also the shortcomings related to our addiction. Accepting our addiction was the first move in the direction of accepting ourselves. We know something about ourselves because of our work in the previous steps. And our illusions of uniqueness have been overcome in the process. We know that we are neither more nor less important than anyone else. Understanding that we are not unique is a good indication of humility. Patience is an essential ingredient of working this step. We may have difficulty with the notion of patience because our addiction accustomed us to instant gratification. But we've already been practicing the principle that make it possible for us to be patient. We simply need to spend on our thoughts the decision to trust the God of our understanding with our will and our lives. If we only trust the set power to a certain extent in step 3, it's time to increase our trust. 